Go ahead and take a look at the 45, 45, 90 triangles. So here's the important part. So we agreed, or at least you guys are listening to me, saying that the, the 45, 45, 90 triangle, where the, um, where the coordinate point, um, or where the hypotenuse is 1, is going to be the easiest to evaluate the sine cosine tangent. So let's go ahead and draw this on the coordinate grid. So that's 1, square root of 2 over 2. And this is going to be square root of 2 over 2. Now again, this is a 45 degree triangle, right? But in your, on, your, on our unit circle, though, we also want to include the radians. Does anybody know what 45 degrees, what that converts to radian form? Well, here's pi. Here's pi halves. Half of pi halves would be pi fourths, right? Wouldn't you guys agree 45 degrees is half of 90? Right? So yeah, this is actually the equivalent form of pi over 4. Okay? Now, that we have, now again, we have the special right triangle on the unit circle, right? So we can actually determine this coordinate point, square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. So that is the coordinate point that I'm providing to you guys in that first quadrant for that middle angle is square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. Okay. So here's the kind of trick that we need to kind of work on. If I take this triangle and I just put it in the second quadrant, last class period, what we learned was now everything's the same. The side, like the angle, that's still like a, a 45 degree angle, right? That didn't change. We still have a right triangle. This is still square root of 2 over 2. This is now negative square root of 2 over 2, right? So therefore, the coordinate point now becomes negative square root of 2 over 2 comma square root of 2 over 2. I'm actually just going to erase that. Wouldn't you guys agree? That's the only thing that changes there, is that coordinate point gets flipped over. right? Now, we need to understand, though, if these have what we call the same reference angle, if I was to draw an angle from here to here, that's the angle we want to write down on our unit circle. right? If you look at that, what is that angle like to go from standard form, standard form for you is here, to rotate to there. Like, what angle is that? So again, let's think about this. From here to here is 180. This is, has a reference angle 45 degrees. So therefore, you're really 45 degrees short of 180. So what is a 45 degrees short of 180? 135. So this angle that we measure, like this angle right here, from here to here, that's going to be 135 degrees. Or what is pi over 4 short of 4 pi over 4? 3 pi over 4. Okay. So again, remember, guys, all these angles that you're drawing, you're drawing these angles from standard form. So yes, the reference angles are all 45 degrees or pi over 4. But we're trying to find the angle for this. From here to here is 45 degrees. From here to here is 135. So what if we reflect this again? Again, we know it has the same reference angle, right? And then so what's, what's 45 degrees over 180? What would this angle be? From here to here, what would that angle be? From here to here is 180 plus 45 degrees. 225. And then what's pi over 4 over pi? So this is really 4 pi over 4, right? 4 pi over 4 is pi plus pi over 4, which is 5 pi over 4. So again, I'm giving you the angle in degrees for that middle angle in the third quadrant. I'm giving you the radian, right? This is the angle from here to here. The reference angle is all 45 degrees. And then the coordinate point is now going to be the same coordinate point, but negative. And then we can do one more. Obviously, we know this point now is going to be the same point, positive x, negative y. Again, this is what we learned last class period as far as the um, quadrants that it's in. And therefore, these an this angle then is going to produce all the way around is 360. But if we're 45 degrees short of 360, then this angle is 315 degrees. If all the way around the circle is 8 pi over 4, and we're pi over 4 short, then we're at 7 pi over 4. Okay. So I'm giving you guys all those angles. Does anybody have any questions as far as finding the angles for the um, 45 degrees or pi over 4 section? Yes? Um, for the bottom, the last and the right top quadrant, what is the angle in between? 
315. Do other ones, sorry. 7 pi over 4. Okay, Here? Yeah. 5 pi over 4. Because okay. halfway around a circle is pi. Oh, in terms of fourths and quarters, it's 4 pi over 4. So if you add a pi over 4, you're at 5 pi over 4. Right? Is everybody OK with that? Kind of? Maybe? Well, there's more points here, right? So why don't we just kind of um, continue this process into the 30, 60, 90. So let's do a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Same idea. Um, now, again, if this is going to be 30 degrees, now again, remember I said, when the hypotenuse is 1, that's going to make our life a lot easier. Okay, So that's 30 degrees. Now, does anybody know what the equivalent of 30 degrees is going to be in terms of radians? Close, pi over 6. So this is actually going to produce the first point. And if you guys look at that unit circle, again, these are all proportional. But you guys can see it at 30 degrees, we're going to be dealing with the square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. That means the first coordinate point you can write on that unit circle is going to be square root of 3 over 2, comma 1 half. And that's in the first quadrant. Right? And of course, it's going to be positive. right? Everything's positive in the first quadrant. Right? So now I gave you the angle, 30 degrees. And again, you can see that where that um, 30 degrees, where it's basically that first point is creating the triangle. Now, I don't want you to draw the triangle in your unit circle because it's going to become too messy, which I'll, show, which I'll show you in a second, or I'll show you later. So then, now we're just going to do the reflections again. Let's reflect about the x-axis. So now it's basically going to be that lower point here in the second quadrant. The coordinate point, I think you guys can start to see the pattern, is just a reflection. The x is now negative. This has the same reference angle, but again, we're trying to find the measure from here to there. So again, halfway around the circle is pi, or in terms of 6, or I'm sorry, halfway around the circle, let's do degrees first. Halfway around the circle is 180, and you're 30 degrees short of 180. So this angle from here to here is, what's 30 degrees short of 180? 150. What about in terms of radians? Halfway around the circle is pi. In terms of 6, you could say 6 pi over 6. So what is pi over 6 short of 6 pi over 6? 5 pi over 6. And then let's do down here, this reflection. You guys can see that, obviously, hopefully, you guys can see what's happening here. So notice the points, guys, are not changing. The only thing that's changing is the signs based on which quadrant we're in. Agreed? The reference angles are all the same. The distance from the angle to the x-axis is always going to be 30 degrees or pi over 6. So therefore, to speed this up a little bit, this is going to be 210. This will be 7 pi over 6. I'm just adding 30, adding pi over 6. Over here, my coordinate point is now going to be um, positive square root of 3 over 2, negative 1 half. All the way around is 360. Subtract 360, which is 330 degrees. In terms of radians, that's 12 pi over 6. Subtract pi over 6, that's 11 pi over 6. OK? So now you should have the bottom two angles covered on your circle. Now let's take that 30, 60 degree triangle and let's flip it one more time. Let's do a 60, 30 degree, 90 triangle. You're good. You can stop a seat. Okay. Oh, so what would that look like? That's going to look something like that. Right? Same 30, 69 triangle, it's just flipped. Yeah? So this coordinate point, we are, it's the same triangle, it's just flipped on its side. So that's 1 half, so that's 60 degrees. Then the equivalent in terms of radians is going to be 60 degrees equivalent radians is pi over 3. Right? Because 60 plus 60 plus 60 is 180. Pi over 3 plus pi over 3 plus pi over 3 is pi. Right? Yeah. 3 pi over 3? OK. So therefore, this is square root of 3 over 2. 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. Can we do the angles kind of rather quickly now? 
It's just the reflections. It's the same points. Do this point in the second quadrant. OK, Mr. Bogon, we're doing the same thing over and over again. Yes, you're right. This is negative 1 half, square root of 3 over 2. This is 60 degrees short of 180. So therefore, it is 120 degrees. It's pi over 3 short of 3 pi over 3, which is 2 pi over 3. Then we do down here. Same point, different signs. 60 degrees, 180 plus 60 is 240. Pi over 3 over 3 pi over 3 is 4 pi over 3. Then we do this reflection. Same point, now 1 half times negative square root of 3 over 2. So 360 subtract 60 degrees, which is 300. 6, six pi over 3 subtract 1 is 5 pi over 3. Okay, so I want to make sure, guys, when you're, you know, when you look at this unit circle, the reason why I'm going through this is again, so you guys can like understand where these points are coming from. They're not just random points that you're like, hey, here's the points on your circle, memorize them. No, literally, you look at, look at what I did. Look how much time I spent doing this. I took every single special right triangle that we had. We could have done any of them, right? But I told you it's going to make sense if our hypotenuse is 1. And I'm about to explain that why we wanted to use that one. But we, couldn't have, we could have used any of those 30, 69 triangles. Agreed? Anyone. But the nice thing is, when we have them with all with the hypotenuse of 1, we can all put them on the same x, y axis. Now watch what happens when I do this. When I put them on the same x, y axis, now, They're going to look like this. Same right triangles, same hypotenuse of 1. Here's the coordinate points that you take away, right? And hopefully you guys can start to see that, oh, well, what if I had this as a hypotenuse of 1, or this had a length of 1, and that has a length of 1? Well, if I start to connect these, that's where I'm getting that nice little curvature. And that's why I have a circle instead of triangles on my piece of paper. Yes? And so you guys can imagine. Take, imagine if we took all these triangles and put all that information and put them on that sheet of paper. Do you guys see how like crazy and stuff that would be? Right? It'd just be way too much information. It'd be information overload. So that's why you guys have the unit circle you do. We're basically not showing you the triangles. We're just showing you the coordinate points. And again, why is that so important? Because what is the hypotenuse here? One. Like, look it. Do we really need to have the hypotenuse when we're doing opposite over hypotenuse? No. We just need to look, know what the opposite side is. That's why having the hypotenuse of 1 is so important. We also need to know this point is 0, 1, and this point is 1, 0. And if we continue that kind of pattern, that is where we come up with the unit circle. And we can also figure out these points. Now, I wanted you guys to write down all those points so you guys could see. But in reality, if you know these coordinate points, or as far as what I want you guys to memorize, is basically the first quadrant and this points. If you understand these points, then that's all I really need you to know. Because what we're going to learn today is how to use these points to find all the points in the inner circle. Because in reality, aren't these the only three points you really need to know? Everything else is just a reflection. Agreed? Everything else, every other point up there is just a reflection of these points. Yes? So that's why we just want to know this. Could you memorize what's on your sheet of paper? Of course. Some people try to do it. They think that's the best thing to do. But I think that's an extreme waste of time to go ahead and try to memorize all those points. All right. But I think it's really important for you guys to understand this. Understand these are reflections of each other. Understand where these points came from. OK? Um, so furthermore, what this brings to us is a new set of trigonometric functions. Now, since the hypotenuse is 1, guys, what's so important about this, why this makes our life so much easier now, is now we don't need to include the hypotenuse. If the hypotenuse is 1, rather than saying sine is opposite over hypotenuse, 
or rather than saying sine is, uh, is the y coordinate over the r, which represented the hypotenuse, now we can just say sine is y. It's really y over 1, but why write y over 1? Agreed? Why don't we just take the y coordinates? And the nice thing about this is, are these all written as terms in x and y coordinates? Oh, crap, actually, there's one more thing I wanted to bring up. But aren't these all in x, y coordinates? Yes. And again, that actually brings up my one last point, actually, I forgot to mention. So real quick, before you guys think about that, just look up here real quick. That guy, that's not going to go away. I'll, that's going to be up there. You'll have plenty of time. Trust me. But one thing I want you guys to understand is, why don't we have this point? Why don't we talk about that point? Like, why don't we have that coordinate, with those coordinates? It still is a radius of 1, yeah? Is it because it's just the same thing in both cases? Well, we, well, first of all, we don't know. Like, this creates a triangle. You can create a triangle at this point. The only problem is we don't know the sides of that triangle, right? The only reason why I chose these is because we know these, right? I gave these to you guys in day one. We talked about the special right triangles, right? I showed you that special relationship. So special right triangles have that special relationship. That's why we use them. Now, can we evaluate for the x and y coordinates of that point? Of course. But guess what? Since they are not points of values that we need to, we're going to use a calculator. We're going to need to use a calculator. And since we don't have a calculator for this test, we're only going to be focused on points of the unit circle that we are given right now, okay? or these points, because these are points that we're familiar with. Understood? Last but not least, one more example I just want to talk about real quick, because this one gets students a lot too. So here's where the mistake that a lot of students will make. They see, oh, sine is just y. That makes sense. So the sine. So when I say, what is the sine of 45 degrees, people say, oh, it's the square root of 2 over 2. Right? That makes sense. That's it. Just the y coordinate, y over hypotenuse. But then I give them a point like this. And this is square root of 2 over square root of 2. And it's a radius of 2. And I say, all right, what's the sine of that angle, of that point of pi of 4? And they say, oh, I give them a point, and they say, oh, the sine is square root of 2. No. Because what is the hypotenuse of this point? Is this, first of all, is this point on the unit circle? Is that point on the unit circle? No. no. So you can only evaluate, you can only use those definitions. Just have a seat. Just have a seat, really. You can only use those definitions, guys, when you have the point on the unit circle. Agreed? This point is a distance of two away. If you were to create a right triangle, that has a hypotenuse of two. Agreed? So you have to go back to your old definition, y over r. Yes? So please only include the y coordinate as the sign. When it's, on, when it's a point on the unit circle. If it's not on the unit circle, you need to do y over r, where r represents the hypotenuse, or create a triangle. Agreed? Understand? OK, that's just one of those common misconceptions students will make. All right, but make sure you guys have those. And again, make sure you guys understand the reciprocal relationship. 